What, 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 what up, people of the world? Special Caesar here coming at you with more sweet video game madness, folks. It's the Steam Next Festival. That means tons of demos coming out of the yin yang you can check out and play online for free. So we're going to be spending the next few days trying out as many of them as we can, as it takes my fancy. I know I said I'd be streaming Queen's, uh, Queen's Wish 2 and the Enchantress, or the Dragoness even, but I just haven't had time What with uh, getting prepared for the first Cthulhu session which we streamed last night, which went really well, and um, now this has cropped up, so things just keep popping up in the way. I, I will get back to it, I do promise, but for the meantime, we are going to be checking out as many demos as we can over the next couple of days. So the first one that we're looking at is Terra Endless Night, which is this one that we have in front of us now. Looks pretty interesting. It is a strategy, turn-based, survival, atmospheric, um, strat did I say strategy game? I don't, don't remember. <laughs> but it's, uh, you take control of a crew who are looking for a ship that went missing and it's like in the Arctic. It's kind of like, looks like a mix of this war of mine and Frostpunk. So you go out searching for supplies and stuff like that. But anyway, I've clicked play, I've clicked start and play, and this is what's popped up. Ahoy, Captain. Welcome to Terror Endless Night. While playing the game, you can take the helm of a 19th century ship stuck in the ice during polar night. The fate of the crew depends on your decisions and management skills. Oh, God, no. You're not relying on me for decision making, are you? In the demo version, you can follow the last days of the historic voyage of HMS Terra and HMS Erebus. With this short episode, we want to introduce you to the most important mechanics of Terra Endless Night. Please keep in mind that the present presented demo is still a work in progress, and you may encounter some errors. We present only a snippet of the final version. After finishing the game, please do not forget to share your opinion on the Steam Forum. Your opinion is crucial for us. Good luck. Okay, so I'll be sure to do that. Francis Crozier! Oh! Bonjour, monsieur! I have no idea if you are French or not, but I assume you are from here and speak my native tongue. 13th of April, 1848. A bunch of numbers north and a bunch more numbers west. The cold doesn't give in. We're still trapped. The ice immobilized our vessels near northwest coast of King William Island in August 1846. These words are written with my own hand. That is Francis Rodon Moira Crozier, current commander of this expedition. It is so far. It is so for Sir Franklin, who was in command from after we had made sail from Greenhithe died on 11th of June 1847. I'm not sure what he means by it is so for Sir... I think he's taken over command or something. Commanding Captain James Fitzjames has become my deputy. Okay, so they've lost the captain. I mean, he's already died apparently. As HMS Terror has been abandoned, we have grouped on HMS Erebus. Many men have died. Many men have fallen ill. We're running out of supplies. The crew experiences rather weird conditions, weakness, absent-mindedness, lack of energy. We have sent people to get us some help several times in various directions, but alas, none of those expeditions have returned. If nobody arrives to help us, me and Captain Fitzjames will consider cannibalism. It's the only option. We've got no choice, men. We have to cut each other up and eat each other. <laughs> we will consider leaving Erebus and trying to save ourselves on foot. Captain, if you wish, you can end this day and go to the next one. Thanks for that, steward. Why would I do that? Uh, what am I supposed to do? Exit to the main menu. Steward. Orders. Steward just says that. Orders is... Whoa, okay. So this has literally just thrown me right into the middle of the game without any explanation of any of the mechanics or how anything works or what I'm even supposed to be doing. I like it. Cool. Well, I like the art style. This is obviously, like I said, it's just the demo is just a snippet of what's available in the game, so it probably won't even be a working demo, to be honest. But so far, I like the art style. It's really cool. Fits really well. Science, religion, 
progress, militarism hasn't changed. So we go back to science. What are these? Restoration priority. Tr the officers as crewmates. Okay, so are these like different orders that I could give? These are locked. Keep the dignity. Modifies the productivity of all crewmates by a factor of 0.9. Minus 5 madness for all crewmates per turn. Cool, they've got madness in it. For all crewmans per turn. You can feel it, how it slowly steps on your toes. Marasm and the sense of hopelessness slowly consumes the minds of your crew. I wonder what marasm is. No wonder difficult conditions and feeling of no, no today or tomorrow with this uncertainty may change even the biggest optimist into a pessimist. You know how important it is in the army to keep routine and the drill and you, fi and you find it useful to help your people to feel a sense of everyday life. That is why you may decide to make an order of keeping the mar mariners uniforms and accessories in a navy standard cleanliness. Every case of sloppiness will be strictly punished by additional tasks or longer shifts. It is the highest time to keep everyone on the ship motivated and devoted to surviving. God, that sounds like hell on earth. <laughs> Do we allow it or forbid it? I think we've already allowed it. Keep the dignity. I think we've already allowed it, haven't we? Because, no, it's already... That's... Okay, I see. If we've allowed it already, then it's allow is greyed out. And forbid is lit up. Whereas these two are both greyed out. So at the moment, this is on forbid. So if I change it to allow... Oh, I can't change it to allow. I can forbid it. Oh, because it was already allowed. I see. So when it's lit illuminated, it's allowed, and you can choose to forbid it if you want. So do we want to allow either of these? Oh, we can't. We can't allow or forbid it for some reason. Don't know why. Okay, whatever that does. April the 13th, 1848. Ten days left. Sick people in bed. Ten. Thirteen. What's this? I don't know. It just says 13 something. This looks like a virus. This icon looks like a virus. So maybe that's 13 sick people. And ten of which people are... Ten of them are in bed. I don't know. Ship temperature is 5 degrees C. That's pretty warm actually. Compared to like the icy, frozen, wintry. Temperature that's presented on screen. Five degrees is uh, not bad. Okay, what's this? Outdoor temperature. <coughs> okay, outside is minus 32. That makes a bit more sense. <laughs> Working, 16. Number of crew is 34. Ship state is 15%. Assign the crew to tasks. Ice crushing guard, kitchen furnace, sick bay. Maybe it will explain all this. Maybe I literally only have... The only choice I have now is to empty the end the turn. So how do I do that? That's what this guy's saying. Steward. Captain, if you wish, you may end this day and go to the next one. How do I do that? Oh, is it down here? End of turn, yeah. Okay. It's no use at all. Everything is pointless. Deputy Captain, get your... Morale together, son. Captain James Fitzjames, for <laughs> what a name, James Fitzjames, was staring at a piece of paper, almost tearing it up. My brain wasn't working at its best, and my memory was malfunctioning def definitely. But I don't think I have ever seen him so depressed. The scrap he was holding was a hastily written report of icebreakers who left no delusions. The ice was pressuring on the ship with that, with such a force that cannot be withstood. Oh, even by sending large groups of icebreakers who we didn't have either way okay so the, sh the ice is pressing in on the ship even when they're trying to stop it basically i couldn't let my deputy break down mentally in these darkest times it is thanks to his presence and support that we are able to survive another hour here james i finally said do you remember what i've talked about we've considered leaving Eberibus and escaping on foot now, since the ship is way beyond saving, it's no more option but a necessity we'll soon have to face. 
Counterfeit James looks at me with his once charming eyes. There is no trace of happy sparks that used to shine from them. If so, we have to plan that carefully, he replied. In the meantime, since we are no longer considering stopping them from the pressuring ice, it seems that have just gained a few icebreakers. Oh, it seems that we have just gained a few icebreakers. We can assign them to other tasks. The young captain was right. I just had to decide where I should relocate them. Move them to the kitchen, guardhouse, the furnace. I don't know what any of these things do. Let's move them to the... F move them to burn in the furnace for the moment. Took me a moment to make the decision, but I eventually said the marinas should be relocated to the galley. It seems they are most needed there. Fitzjames smiled faint, smiled faintly. So it be it, Commander. They will be assigned there. Steward, so you have decided to stop the ice breaking. In order to do so, you have to open the task menu. Where's the task menu? Do this. That's orders. Task is here, isn't it? Yeah. Here is a list of every activity essential to our survival. Click on ice breaking. Ice crushing, you mean? Call the people away from their work to do so. Click on them, sir. Oh, fuck me. Everyone's in the red and sick. Fucking hell. This is not looking healthy if that's our crew. Okay. Marines can, be force, can force ice crushing. Marines can force a passage through the ice cap that stopped the vessel. Okay. What's this? Oh, this is the order of, like, who has the most morale, probably, who has the most mental state, stable mental state, and who has the most health. And that's just A to Z, I guess. Selected crew will remain. I guess we just close it now? Yeah. You have chosen to assign them to work by the furnace. Click on furnace. Choose the choose people from the right side and assign them to work this place by clicking on them. Yeah, I chose the furnace because everyone's sick, so the least we can do is try and make it warm enough. Whereas keeping them in the kitchen or putting them in the kitchen or as a guard lookout, I'm not sure if that would help at all. Furnace provide warmth on the furnace provides warmth on the ship and preserves marines from hypothermia and freezing to death. By adjusting the lever you change the amount of coal to burn. The more you set, the warmer it becomes. It will translate to the crew's health though, it will drain our supplies quicker. Left 60 coal for 16 days. 64 coal, 62. So each lever knocks another two Another two, um, I don't know, doesn't it change the day for nine days? Left 64 coal for nine days. Why is that so low? If you use that, then that goes up to 32 days. That's way more. 60 coal for 16 days. Now, I like the 62 coal for 32 days. That seems like the best option for us. And that doesn't seem to change the ship or the furnace temperature at all. By doing this doesn't seem to change the temperatures, it just changes how much coal we have. So I'm just going to try and preserve as much coal as possible for the moment, whatever that does. Splendid! People have been assigned to their tasks so you can return to the main menu. Sick bay is fucked. Maintenance is... So we have the material to be used. Pick where? What? Where did it say to click? Let's try that again, furnace. Now as we have more people to work, we can burn more coal. Click here to set the amount of material to be used. Oh, is it here? No, that can't be it. What? Click here, it doesn't have anywhere to select. Maybe it meant up here. Yeah, I think it meant up here and we already did that, so we jumped ahead of ourselves. Right, okay, cool. Back to the main menu. So, if you wish to rearrange the allocation of people at work, you can do so whenever you want in the task menu. That's this, isn't it? No, that's the orders. No, that's what we just did. Okay. Yeah, I, what if I want to just uh, end the day now? I guess we just end it. Every day becomes a monstrous routine. After waking up, or rather, breaking out of a trance that cannot be called sleep, 
I f the first thing I the first I do is getting to know if any expedition has returned. Mariners stopped answering this question and resorted to simply shaking their heads, maybe for the better as their voice could burn my conscience even more. Or other... Even more other. Okay. <laughs> have I sent those men to their deaths? Or have they found human settlements but it was decided that rescuing us would be too dangerous? I was thinking how to sell, to tell the crew we would as well embark into the cold, dark void outside of the ship when I received a report from a messenger. Yeah, he does not look healthy at all. Fucking hell. He looks fine. He looks completely well fed and, well and perfectly nourished. Probably because he's the captain. He's keeping all the supplies in his cabin. Captain Fitz Fitzjames is sharing an information, sir. Sharing an information? Okay. Said somebody entering my cabin. I turned around. It was John Russell, a navigator who seems to be responsible for the watch. People assigned to helping with the furnace have helped the people there greatly. With more hands at work, we will be able to beef. We will be able to beef the ship better. Heat. That must. Have, that's supposed to say heat. I bet you. I bet you that's meant to say heat the ship better. One small instance of good news in the dawn of death and hopelessness. Better than nothing. I nodded and dismissed the messenger. Now back to reality. How to tell the crew that we are leaving the ship. Listen up, you layabout fuckheads. That's how I do it anyway. Don't know about anyone else. Okay, am I supposed to do anything now or just end the task again? Yeah, just end the task. End the day. Is it the darkness, the cold, or maybe closed space? Marines have experienced losing their senses several times already, though it has never been so dramatically as today. There were not many of us on the ship, so every, every somehow loud noise was echoing in wooden halls, walls of the vessel. What? <laughs> what? What did that sentence say? <laughs> Especially such horrible screams coming somewhere from the common cabin. I went to see what was going on, but with every step I took, I felt more and more devoured by the screaming, imprisoning me just like the ice trapping Erebus, screaming full of fear and despair. But what other kind of screaming could it be? I guess it's going to be joyful screaming. What happened was that one marina dragged, probably having chopped it off, a huge oaken cross from the ship's chapel to the common cabin. When I ran into the room, the cross was lying on the floor and the mariner on top of it. He was nailing his hand to the horizontal bar. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He was screaming, freeing himself from others who were trying to stop them. I immediately tried to help as well, but the mariner turned out to be surprisingly strong in spite of his weak and malnourished posture. Okay, so he's crucifying himself. That's fucking weird. What the hell are you doing, man? I shouted, joining in a cacophony of nightmare choir. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. The marina kept on screaming, ignoring everyone around him completely. Eventually, though, when he managed to nail his hand to the cross for good, we pulled a hammer from his hand and immobilized his second hand effectively. Fucking hell, we, get, we have to kill him? After the noise, the room fell silent. It was sudden, unexpected, and probably due to that, even more frightening. Holding the madman, we were looking at each other confused. What are we going to do, Captain? Somebody asked me, asked my, and only then did I realize that everyone was waiting for my orders. So that should say me. Somebody asked me. Uh, well, we can't kill him. I'm not just going to be like, murder him immediately. He's obviously... No good for anything anymore, we just bash his skull in. That's what happens to men who are no good to me anymore, you see. <laughs> We're just going to have to isolate him, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go with isolation. The madman calmed down completely. He was lying on the cross and looking at a ceiling with an empty gaze, as if he had lost all his vital energy by nailing his hand. Is it able to detach him anyhow smoothly? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> is it able to detach him anyhow smoothly? <laughs> I asked nobody in particular. If there is no infection to the wound, it should not be much of a problem, said someone from the crowd. Maybe we will be able to save his hand as well. 
Try to detach him then and put him in isolation. Yeah, put him in isolation so that he won't be able to harm himself, let alone harm others. Maybe it's just a temporary breakdown. Perhaps he needs rest. Mariners looked at each other with doubt, but after a moment they started doing what I ordered. Let's hope inst insanity won't spread to other people here. What do you mean they looked at each other with doubt? Yeah, you're going to assume it's a temporary breakdown and that he'll be fine. You're not just going to bash his skull in because he's gone a bit gaga in this horrible situation. You have decided to imprison the Marauder. Yes, Stuart, I have. Thank you for that. Ship is 10 degrees now. That's fine. Uh, days and nights blend into one in this nightmarish darkness. Time seems to slowly stop working. How much time has passed since my decision to imprison the madman? Hours or days? Everything seems so distant and current at the same time. Whatever the case is, the crew quickly felt the con consequences of my order. The madman was putting in a holding cell, was put in a holding cell, but it didn't help him. Damn it. Although he had no possibility to harm himself, he quickly started speaking again. Soon his words turned into singing, Bible fragments, parts of novels, weird and incomprehensible words started echoing on the ship. I'm quite sure it didn't tip make my crew f uh, feel better since even I can't control my anxiety whenever I hear the sound of his voice ringing in my ears. Ah, oh, maybe we should have slit his throat then. Jeez, alright, I learned my lesson. In the afternoon, though, it's just an estimate since it was hard to talk about something like time of day in such conditions, I received a report from the infirmary. I must admit, I was getting worried about no information regarding the process of healing indisposed people. For this reason, it made me happy that someone broke the silence eventually. Okay, that's a really weird and long and convoluted way of saying that you are happy to hear from the infirmary. That's all you need to say. Oh, it's this guy again. Condition of two patients have become significantly better, sir, John Russell reported to me. These two are the cook and the watch's commander. I'm not sure if you know, but if you're bringing me probably the... Oh, it's okay. It's the captain. I'm not sure if you know, but you're bringing me probably the only positive word I've heard recently. I said, trying to sound as cheerful as I could, though it probably didn't work out that much. Well, that's not everything, Commander. The messenger darkened. I realized that my happiness was premature. It turned out that the medication supply was running drastically low. It was possible to fully cure just one of the patients. What is your decision that I should carry to the infirmary, sir? So I have to kill one person, really? We can't survive without a cook. If we kill the cook and no one else knows how to cook, we're fucked. If we kill the, if we kill, if we let the guard commander die, most other people will be able to pick up their responsibility. Or there'll be someone on the boat who can pick up their responsibilities and duties of the guard commander. I'm going to kill the cook. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but in my opinion, in a situation like this, someone who can cook keep morale up and feed the men properly is essential. Yeah, under such conditions, were there any decisions that could be considered a good one? After all, I had to decide on yet another human life. I think that the debilitated crew needs a cook more since he will take care of the food, unlike a watch's commander. Let's just hope that we won't be ambushed by the Inuit people or some wild beast. You have decided to finally cure one of the mariners to do so go to the infirmary in the task menu. Infirmary. Sick bay. To treat sick people, click treat patients. You can manage their treatment here. Treat patients. Stuart, so choose a cook's disease and give him two medication. It will help him recover quicker, even as soon as tomorrow. Where's the cook? Oh, there he goes. Richard Wall, the cook got an infection six sailors how do I how do I oh there we go click on the infection seven turns left 
Where does it say how much medication I have? It doesn't tell me. Oh, it says I've got zero medicines. I guess for the tutorial they just allowed you to add two. Yeah, you can't add any more. Okay, so do that. So seven days left. Is that done? That's done now, right? I think. No, it's not. Oh yeah, it's done there. It is done, so... I don't know. What the fuck? In the day now, and you should be healed by tomorrow, I suppose? As it turned out, the decision to cure the cook was on point. The crew quickly started appreciating a change in the quality of their meals. Yeah, exactly. Taking advantage of improved mood among the crew, I decided to announce that we would be leaving the ship. <laughs> Settle down, crew. Eat your food. Now that you're enjoying it and you're happy again, the morale is slightly improved. I've got something to announce. We're all leaving the ship, and it's going to suck. Okay, enjoy the rest of your meals. It might be your last ones. We are still waiting for any of the group we have sent for the help return. He said on a meeting convoked by me. However, I do think that we should prepare for the worst. If we are indeed left unaided, abandoning Erebus would be the only possible way to save ourselves. The crew was surprisingly content upon hearing my words. Maybe a lot of them could sense that something was already going on. Or maybe Captain Fitzjames, my guardian angel, who was the only one to know of this plan, had spread this information so mariners could slowly adapt to it. Okay. Someone's been spreading rumours, have they? On my ship, I'll have you all flogged! Are we supposed to start preparing now, sir? I would, yes. Yeah, slowly, we have to make a list of things to take with us. Prepare packages, and if nobody returns in a week's time, we will set off. But where, Captain? That was a good question, actually. A, good, a question to which there is no answer yet. The cook is ready to work, let's, let's, so let him do his job. How do I do that? Kitchen. Richard Wall Cook is no longer infected. The cook and co-workers prepare meals for the ship's crew and preserve food reserves in good condition. Sailors. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on here. I don't understand this. So sailors have one ration each. There's 33 of them. But what's this? What's why is what's the 10 doing there? 330 rations. Yeah. Is that how many? What's the 10? I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand what the 10 is. Oh well, whatever. Sir, if that is all, confirm your decisions and move on to the next day. Yeah, alright, give me a second. Jeez, mate. Jeez, mate, you're right at my backside. Get out of there. Pull your tongue out of my ass. Gathering supplies before leaving the ship is at full stretch now. It also turned out that we're not alone on the ship. Rats have a true paradise on the lowest deck, Captain. We have not controlled it properly back then, and now it turns out that they have grown in number significantly during this time. Captain Fitzjames reported to me. Fucking rats. Surely it's a source of meat. Catch him and eat him. Quid pro quo, motherfuckers. Does it pose any problem to us, I asked. I mean, in our current situation, as we're leaving the ship anyway, we're not able to take with us everything from the lowest deck. We can leave it behind along with the rats. Yeah, catch some of the rats as well. Use them as food. James Fitzgerald leaned towards me with a del delicate smile on his face. I'm not saying that it is a problem, quite the contrary, maybe it is an opportunity, exactly. I was looking at him without a word, so he continued, Rats, as gross as they are, contain meat. Meat that was bred on our supplies, since we are running low on food, we could hunt them. I think that additional food, though disgusting, could be helpful in a rainy day. I shuddered at the thought of eating rats, though indeed there were numerous cases where their meat saved lives in the sea. Do you want rats, or do you want human meat? You've got a choice now. Do you, do you devour the crew, start chopping up human bodies and eating those, or do you start eating rats? And the captain's like, oh shit, let me think about that one for a while. It's a difficult decision. I've wanted to try cannibalism for quite some time, you see.
On the other hand, Fitzjames carried on, mood among our people is certainly not the best before a journey into a cold darkness. We can boost their morale by organising a shooting competition. Can we make use of ammunition that we ha still have because we will have to leave it here anyway? But in any case, but in this case, there will be not much left for the rats for us to eat. Using Pester Boots crew morale, it was an interesting idea. Once again, I thank God that I had James by my side. Okay, so do you want to use the rats for entertainment to improve the morale of the soldiers? Or eat the rat meat, which will probably decrease morale, but it will sustain us for longer. I think we're going to use the rats for entertainment. If we're leaving the ship anyway, and we're going off, we're not going to be able to carry much with us in terms of rations. So I think we can make do with the rations that we have left. And then just get the men's morale up before we go off, off board ship. We're going to use the rats for entertainment. I decided that before a journey that might last several months, we mean appropriate moods among us. When we set off, there'll be no place for absent-mindedness or, God forbid, questioning my orders. I will announce the competition immediately, Fitzjames said, and left the cabin. We decided about the rats to execute the decision to choose order menu. Order. Choose rats for fun order to announce the hunt on rats. It will enable us to get more food. Make up your mind. I thought it wasn't food. I thought it was entertainment. It must be this one. Yeah, rats for fun. This order will provide an increase of crew's loyalty, 100 total, but increase a chance for accidents. A long way that you and your crew have ahead will be the biggest challenge since the beginning of your journey. And the mood of your people as well as their morals, oh, morals are on a very low level right now since it's been a long time of these troubles that you found yourselves in. Use a chance to make them feel better and provide a little bit of relief. Yep, allow it. Cool. So I'm happy to inform you that you have unlocked all tasks and, eight and crew members. Good luck, you're going to need it. So is that, what, I'm all done, am I? I can just do whatever I like now. Yeah, I can just do whatever I want. Fuck me, so it just throws you in the deep end. What does guard do? Guards watch over safety of the ship and its crew, not only to not only on the ship's decks, but in the nearest surrounding area as well. We don't need guards. I don't think guards are that important here. Ice crushing isn't important. Kitchen is, furnaces, sick bay is as well, I think. What does maintenance do? Maintenance keeps the ship's decks and rooms in good condition to make it possible to sail away. Well, we're not going to sail away. We're leaving, aren't we? So you can all stop that immediately if we're going to leave the ship tomorrow. Sick bay. We want as many people in sick bay as possible. What does it mean by disturbed? Wary, disturbed and loyal. I wonder what that means. Fuck me. Look at how messed up everyone is. Okay, well I guess we just end the day again. Today I received a report on a shooting competition where rats were the target. Everybody who was willing to take part in it, and there was nobody who had anything against it, was given a weapon and the grand shooting was declared. Mariners had a fixed amount of time to shoot as many rats as they could. The best competitors were awarded an additional portion of rum, though everyone appreciated just a mere opportunity to shoot at a target. People's moods have definitely increased. Yeah, they will after an extra portion of rum. Hello, Cryer Jester. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Thanks for joining. In the afternoon, we were faced with the nightmare, nightmare of reality in which I could blame only myself for the decision I had made. Weapons that I had ordered to be issued for the shooting competition was not returned in the same number. When we were trying to explain what happened, we heard gunshots. Oh, shit. A marina ambushed others with a rifle, seeming to stay, seemingly in a state of a muck. Fucking hell. Look at his eyes. Look how crazy he is. This guy we're definitely going to put down. He looks like a fucking psychopath. He fires a few times, and it might have just been a miracle that he severely wounded just one marina. Two others were mildly injured, and the attacker was eventually caught. What's got into you, freak? I was shouting in his face with despair. I couldn't get reconcile with that situation. It turned out that the most injured marina died. Oh, shit. Well, this guy's going to have to be hung, isn't he? The shooter was silent and avoided my gaze. Tears were spilling from his eyes. He made an impression of being shattered by his action. 
Could that be temporary insanity as well? I was looking at the crew gathered around us, perhaps had anger painted on their faces. No, people had anger painted on their faces. Justified anger for killing their companion. Such a horrible deed must be punished with another death. Do you get a choice? Though we can allow a loss of another crew member before an extremely demanding march in humane conditions, having one mariner less might decide our fate. Oh goodness, what do I do? Oh shit, what do I do? I can't... One death deserves another isn't a very good policy to go on. Although he did murder someone in cold blood, he could just be a psychopath. Let's kill him. Let's hang him. I'm not going to let him go free. It's because if we can't imprison him or like make him isolated or anything like that, he might just murder someone else again. So if it's a choice between letting him go free, which I don't think should be allowed, and killing him, I'm going to have to kill him, I think. Whatever awaits us, law is law. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, death for a death. I didn't have to speak a lot. I nodded looking at people around me. They knew exactly what that meant. They craved it. The shooter was dragged to the upper deck and I could only hear the sound of a single gunshot. Is it... Is it what hell... Is this what hell looks like? Shit, that's dark. Just as I woke up today, Captain Fitzjames appeared at my cabin's door. His face was darkened, although it wasn't anything extraordinary in the past few weeks. Preparations for the journey have practically finished, he reported. We are ready to set off in the next few hours. I'd say it's good news, isn't it, James? I said with a faint smile. Yes, it is. Although, do we already know... Do we know already where to go? It was indeed a problem. Even though I had some scenarios prepared in my head, I invited Fitzjames to a table with maps. We are located somewhere here. I nailed my finger in a piece in paper which was destroyed by cold. We can't try to save ourselves by navigating to the north, the direction for which we came from. We would have to cross it by land. This would be the most reasonable solution. James Fitzjames was staring at documents and after a short while he looked at me. He was studying me as carefully as the maps a second ago. What about the second option? He asked, guessing that it wasn't everything I had, off I had to say. Up to that moment, I wasn't sure I even wanted to offer a second opinion, a second option. I started slowly approaching the cabinet with alcohol. I took out a bottle of whiskey, which I had ordered to take with us for special occasion, and poured the liquid into two glasses. Tell me in all honesty, James, I said to him, as one, and pass him one glass. What are the chances for us to survive? I was wondering how he would react to such a question. As it turned out, he wasn't surprised by it, not even slightly. Quite the contrary, he seemed as if he had wanted to hear it. You know, Francis, he said while playing with the glass in his hand, I think we are standing on the very edge from which there is no return. He took a sip. We are doomed and the only thing we can do is to be on duty until the very end of it all. These words were ringing in my ears, especially because they were thoughts uttered aloud. Yeah, this would be a fucking horrible situation. For this exact reason, I started slowly. The second option that I see is heading to the south. According to the maps that we have and to my analysis, it is a direction that might uncover Northwest Passage. Fitzjames was looking at me in silence as if he was tasting my words along with the whiskey. So I carried on. If our death is certain, we can give it a meaning and a goal. To embark on the last journey in order to discover the very thing here we have we had set off from home to fulfill our destiny and our last charge. My solemn words made the captain laugh. He seemed he laughed for the first time since since I can remember. Aye aye, Captain, Fitzjames shouted and raised his glass. I will follow you into any hell. Shit. I have no idea. We can either go north or let's go south. Let's go into hell's bells, men. We're on the edge of it anyway. Let's go south. His mood was infectious. I laughed with him for a moment. I felt as if we were in a different time and place. Maybe this relaxation helped me make a decision. If we are indeed doomed, we can fulfill our destiny. May the Northwest Passage become our sun to which we will head and in which we will burn. 
You will head to the south, I said, raising his glass. James drank his whiskey in one sip. Jeez, this doesn't sound good. John Gregory, the engineer. I really like the artwork. It's really good. Like, look at all the veins in his face and stuff and how blue he is. It's so fucked up. It looks really cool. And the eyes are really good as well. The eyes are really captive of what you'd expect from someone in that kind of situation. I was putting last packages in my backpack and looking at my cabin for the last time which once belonged to Sir John Franklin. Suddenly I heard knocking on the door. It was one of my younger mariners. Mariners, I think that word is. Marinier. All I see is marinier from like mussels. Moule marinier. Captain, may I? He asked, he's, he asked on the doorstep. Of course, has anything happened? He looks ashamed. The matter is, sir, we have talked with one another and there are a lot of dead people on the ship. We are keeping them on lower decks and there is no possibility for a burial. But maybe, maybe there is something we could do for them. I presume you have an idea already? Well, we do. Since we are leaving the ship, we could at least put uh, the dead in berths. Where they used to sleep, where they were alive, before they could sleep forever. Before they sleep forever. Yeah, well if you do that, you're handling the dead when there's sickness going around and people are dying of sickness. So, as much as I don't like giving them a burial of some kind, I also don't want you carrying the corpses around and getting ill, so I'm going to disagree. I was wondering a while ago how we could honour those who passed away and I didn't think of such a solution. However, we didn't have enough time before leaving to take care of it. Looking at Pac's things, which only haste to set off, I had to say no, there is nothing that we can help the dead anyway. A bit while later, waiting for the last crew members, I was standing all prepared and ready on the upper deck. We had boats loaded with supplies as we handed, as we intended to haul them. They could come in handy in case we stumble upon a river or another body of water, unless it's frozen. I wanted to give, I wanted to gaze upon the horizon beyond which we will head, but in such darkness, I couldn't see further than a bulwark. Captain, somebody brought me back from my own thoughts. We are ready. It was James Fitzjames. Ah, oh, James Fitzjames, you reliable James, old chap, James. I do appreciate your friendship and your Jamesliness. Very well then, I looked around. A group of people was standing in front of me. They were exhausted, frostbitten and sick, but at the same time they were glowing with determination to fulfill their destiny. Gentlemen, ahead of us is the toughest journey of our lives. We will go down in history, as I, I said. Upon hearing the cry of approval, which came from everybody's throats, I officially declared, crew, leave the ship. I guess that's the end of the tutorial. Yeah, game summary. Save men, thanks to not so wise decisions you made. So we saved, se we saved seven men. All sailors that were evacuated from the ship, 31 men escaped. Five are sick, three are gave the ill, zero, zero are disloyal. And there's all this to read. Bloody hell, it just keeps going. Okay, cool, so it's just like a log of what you did. Yeah, so I decided to isolate him from the rest. So it gives you a summary of the um, the scenario you just did and the decisions that you made and the, the problems that arose. The crew is impressed by how your commitment to save as many people's lives as possible. There's method to the madness. Your crew drowned into madness was really negative consequences. All right. Cool, thanks for playing. Okay, cool. Well, that looks like quite an interesting game. Uh, obviously that's a very tip of the iceberg, very rudimentary representation of what the game is going to have to offer. Um, but it looks like it might be quite interesting, as long as they have like good... They, they, they've kind of explained how the mechanics work, but they haven't demonstrated how they work. So as long as the mechanics on like rations and heat and 
stuff like that are good. I can see that being quite a good game, quite interesting, quite fun. Uh, I had an absolute blast. Cryo Jester, thanks for joining again. I'll be back in probably about five to ten minutes with the next demo on our Steam Next Fest Demo Bonanza. Not sure what that will be yet, but uh, you'll find out in a bit. Thanks for joining. Be sure to stick around for the next demo. If not, see you in some other content that I, that I produce. I make content almost every single day. So, so I'll wait till next time.